Okay, so um, this is the part two of the chapter three video. Um, so I think I ended right on the page before. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket, and she too started howling. Run, run, run downhill, make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion, and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman heard, and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur, and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off, and anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and wasn't sure he would like it. Gather around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman, and drive him toward the barn, and take it easy. Don't rush him. I'll go and get a bucket of slops. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. Then one of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers. The horses and their stalls in the barn picked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer penned up or tied fast. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be penned up in my own yard. The cocker spaniel was sneaking up on him from one side. Lurvy, the hired man, was sneaking up on him from the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to head him off if he started for the garden. And now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Vern come? He began to cry. Oh, sorry. Let's move this up so you guys can see. Okay. The goose, took the, comm the goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about, cried the goose. Skip around, run toward me, slip in and out, in and out, in and out. Make for the woods, twist and turn. The cocker spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed. Mrs. Zuckerman screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done, cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. Run downhill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. So I think this is where the um, e-book ends. So I'll just, I can read um, the rest of it. Okay, so there's a picture here that goes with this page that we just ended. Hold on, there we go. Um, so I'll read the rest of it from the actual book. Look out for Lurvy, called the cows. Look out for Zuckerman, yelled the gander. Watch out for the dog, cried the sheep. Listen to me, listen to me, screamed the goose. Poor Wilbur was dazed and frightened by this hullabaloo. He didn't like being the center of all this fuss. He tried to follow the instructions his friends were giving him, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time, and he couldn't turn and twist when he was jumping and dancing, and he was crying so hard he could barely see anything that was happening. After all, Wilbur was a very young pig, not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern were there to take him in her arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mr. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pail of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his nose and sniffed. The smell was delicious. Warm milk, potato skins, wheat middlings, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a popover left from the Zuckerman's breakfast. Come, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, tapping the pail. Come, pig. Wilbur took a step towards the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's the old pail trick. Wilbur, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He's trying to lure you back into captivity of thee. He's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step towards the pail. Pig, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman in a kind voice and began walking slowly toward the barnyard, looking all, all about him innocently as if he didn't know that the little white pig was following along behind him. You'll be sorry, 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 called the goose. Wilbur didn't care. He kept walking toward the pail of slops. You'll miss your freedom, honked the goose, and our freedom is worth a barrel of slops. Wilbur didn't care. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops into the trough. Then he pulled a loose board away from the fence, so there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trough and took a long drink of slop, sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the pop over. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurvy fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and leaned the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence, and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite a pig, said Lurvy. Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the words of praise. He felt the warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. He felt peaceful and happy and sleepy. This had been a tiring afternoon. It was still only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. I'm really too young.